I'll go on now to uh, to the year 1944. The exact date is really June 6, 1944. It was my birthday. I was 11 years old at that day. It's one of the uh, one day I shall absolutely never forget in my whole life. As I said previously, every morning my job was to first go to the bakery and buy the bread, bring it to the house, and then go to school. And that particular morning I went, as usually, to the bakery. And there is, of course, a very big window in, in, uh, this, in that bakery. And while I'm buying the, the bread, all of a sudden I look at the big window as I'm waiting to be served, actually. And all of a sudden, there's a lot of people in the streets hugging, kissing, dancing, jumping of joy. It was, it was unreal. It was uh, incredible. I'll never forget this as long as I live. And I'm saying, my goodness, on my birthday, everybody's rejoicing. I absolutely was flabbergasted. It was just unreal the, the, uh, from the outside. In fact, you could hear the screaming and the yelling and, and the joy and the feeling of these people. The, it was incredible. And all I kept saying was, on my birthday, on my birthday, everybody's so happy. I was 11. Anyway, I, I finally get the bread, <clears throat> the French flute, which I had to buy every day. And I walk out. And that's when I found out the fantastic news. The Americans had just landed in Normandy. And this was quite early in the morning, and the news spread like crazy, of course. And then I was told, you know, the war is, you know, the war is uh, almost over. The Germans retracted, the Americans came in. I mean, it was, uh, oh, it, it, it was incredible. So... Anyway, I realized, of course, it had nothing to do with my birthday. It was a purely coincidence that that same day it it hap that it that it all happened the same day. Uh, I <laughs> when I look back now, and I'm trying to analyze it. I know I felt such a joy looking outside that big window of the bakery of those people rejoicing and laughing and jumping and dancing and kissing, hugging. And I must have felt absolutely thrilled that all this was happening on my birthday. When I found out really why they, that happiness and that joy, and I found out the war was over, in my young mind, I could not really appreciate the situation fully. I'm sure I didn't realize how important that day was. Uh, I, w I was really too young to get it inside me that it was a, a very big major event and that after five years of hiding and war and the Holocaust and oh, all that horrible... I just couldn't grasp that. I wasn't really aware of, of, of how bad the war was, how horrible it was. To me, it was just a question of being separated from my parents. So that analyzing, going back into time, I must have felt a little bit disappointed that it wasn't because of my birthday in my childhood mind, that it was the end of a big era, the end of a nightmare, and there must have been some kind of, of disillusionment at the same time that this was all happening. I, I'm, I'm only assuming that those must have been my feelings. I really don't remember how I felt. All I remember is the initial reaction of watching the people outside that big window. And the only thought that came to my mind was, on my birthday, everybody's dancing in the street and hugging and laughing and so this was quite a big traumatic experience now I remember uh, the, the next day or two many Americans with their uniforms 
appeared on the scene in Lille, all over the streets. And where we lived, we lived near a square, big square, a plaza, they called it the plaza square of some kind. And there were many uh, Americans resting there with their big duffel bags. And I'd said earlier, I was a tomboy and very aggressive and very... Uh, I wasn't shy. I was never very, I was never shy. And I used to go over to them, and of course all I could speak was French. And they, was, they, they were Americans. They spoke English. And they, of course it was difficult to communicate. But uh, they, they were so wonderful. They were wonderful with kids. They took out of their duffel bags chocolate, chewing gum, soap. It's soap that smelled delicious. We, we never had soap that smelled like that. And they would hand it out to kids. And I would go from one to another. And by the time I got to the third American, or the fourth one, he'd see my hands were full and he'd say, well, I assume he said no more, we have to give to other people, something to that effect. So I would hide everything inside my blouse, whatever I had given, and then I'd start going in from one to another, and they thought I didn't receive anything yet. And so there we went again, they gave me more chocolate, more gum, and by the time I got to the tent American, you can imagine how huge... I was on top. I mean, I, I, I was I was like a big chubby kid, full of chocolate chewing gum and delicious smelling soap inside my shirt, and I kept getting it and getting it. It, it was a fantastic day. It, it was just wonderful. And one expressed a desire, and then I expressed a desire for them to come to where I lived so they could wash up. They looked so tired and dirty and exhausted. Uh, of course, they wouldn't understand what I was telling them. So I took one by the hand and I signaled to the other to follow. And the next thing I know, five of them followed me to, the, to uh, my foster parents. And I walked in to the house with these five beautiful, gorgeous soldiers. <laughs> And uh, Monsieur and Madame Pierrot, they were ecstatic. They hugged them, they kissed them. Of course, everybody talked in their own language. Nobody understood anybody. We were all talking French. They were all talking English. Nobody knew what the hell was going on, but everybody was hugging and kissing. And it was just beautiful. Anyway, each one took turns going into the bathroom and wash up. And then they came back into the kitchen and sat down, and she served some, some, she served something to drink. And then right in front of them, I took off my blouse, and they saw what I, what, what I had hidden, and they couldn't believe it. Of course, I was 11, very, very skinny and tiny, and I had no inhibitions. I mean, at 11, uh, it just would never have occurred to me not to do it. And they, I had about 25, uh, oh, what was the name of that chocolate? Uh, Hershey's, 25 packages of Hershey's, about 20 packages of bubble gum, about seven, eight soaps, and they were laughing. They, they got such a kick out of it. So I put everything on the table very proudly that I had accumulated all that. And those same five wonderful soldiers, they then, <coughs> while they were drinking, they, at the same time, they opened the duffel bag and gave us more stuff. Uh, it, it was such a fantastic moment. <coughs> and then I remember Monsieur Pierrot coming over to me and hugging me and kissing me, and he's telling me what a good kid I was, how I was able to accumulate all that stuff, and I remember him smelling the soap and then he handed it to his wife and she smelled it it was unreal it was like a, a comedy bit huh? we almost ate the soap that's how good it smelled so then after they had finished washing and everything and giving us more stuff then the three of us went into the bathroom to wash with that soap because it smelled so good it was so fantastic it, it, it was a, a, a beautiful moment in my life 
And uh, I also remember one of the four soldiers, uh, he fell asleep sitting on the chair. He was so exhausted. So she, uh, Madame Pierrot took them to the two bedrooms they had, hers and where Janine and I slept. And she put some blankets on the floor. Well, they all five end up sleeping on the floor. And they slept, I think, seven, eight hours straight. They must have been exhausted. And every now and then I'd go and peek in and just look at them. And it, it was really a fantastic moment. It's just no words for that. It just was absolutely beautiful. Now, the next day they had to leave. Or oh, they, they left the same day. I really don't remember the exact... The, the thing was that they had to go on. You know, they couldn't remain in... Uh, in Lille, they just had to go on. So the goodbyes were kissing and hugging again and crying, and and then they gave us even more stuff. I can't remember what. To me, the chocolate and the chewing gum was of a tremendous importance. Um, this was the first time I was exposed to chewing gum. I had never seen it before. And, in fact, I swallowed it at first. I thought you chew on it a while, and it's a very good taste. And then you just swallow it until one explained that uh, with emotions, he was explaining with emotions how you chew and chew, you know, and you have a good time with it. And he, he was trying so hard to make me see it. And then he would show me how after a while you take it out of your mouth and throw it in the wastebasket, that you don't swallow it. Anyway, that was my first exposure to chewing gum. Till today, I still love it. Uh... That was the, that June 6, 1944, and, and the events a few days later were really big highlights in my life. I just have to, I, I just feel so good remembering it. 